All right, welcome back to Think Tech. Um, this is Community Matters, and we're talking to Derwin Leva. Uh, he's a local Latin artist. That means local in the sense that he lives here, he studied here, he became what he is today as an artist here, right? And, um, and he just had a show in New York City on the West Side, on the West Side Highway, on the docks there, which is where all the shows are these days, on the Hudson River. And we want to talk to him about how he got there, what he did there. I want to start. Oh, welcome to the show, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. New York is the mecca. New York is where the art is in this country, for sure. And, uh, you know, I was uh, telling you before that um, on 57th Street, you had all these art dealers that deal in multi multi-million dollar, you know, art. And the second, second stories of those buildings on 57th Street, right near Carnegie Hall. And, and I'll make it 50... Right near 57th, I mean, maybe 53rd, I'm not sure. Anyway, and then you got Madison Avenue, where uh, there's a couple of museums on Madison Avenue. It's not too far from Fifth Avenue, where the Museum of Metropolitan Museum of Art is. Um, and on Madison Avenue, there's all these art shops. I mean, Greenwich Village. Uh, and in Soho, there are all these art shops, all these exhibits. Now, the, the Hudson River, that's something new. Oh, and downtown. They, they opened up um, the, um, the big gallery downtown right near the Twin Towers Museum. Um, and that's also fabulous. So what you have is art is all over the city, all over Manhattan. And it's all kinds of art. It's the, it's the mecca for art. Um, I can't even name all the art museums and places and artists who show. And you went to New York. <laughs> wow. You showed in an exhibit on the west side in Chelsea. Wow, I'm so impressed, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, the exhibition was at uh, Pier 92. And uh, I mean, the response from the people was amazing. The shows uh, brings between 40 to 50,000 people every year. Um, and just the reaction, just seeing so many, there was, uh, I think, over 300 exhibitors at the pier uh, from like 39 different countries. And each exhibitor, a lot of the galleries and things like that, they have many artists in it. So the exhibition was, I mean, so many people from all over the places. And then just the people coming and seeing the show was uh, talking to everybody uh, for hours. I mean, the, the whole day was just seeing new people, new people coming and seeing that, and, and just talking to everybody uh, for like seven, eight hours nonstop. Oh, wow. So it was a, definitely a great experience. A fellow experience. could get tired. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, sometimes I didn't even have time to eat because uh, uh, I would buy the food and I would bring it, put it under my table. Yeah. And as soon as I grab a bite, I have like three or four people that want to talk to me about my work. So I start talking to them and... Uh, by the end of the show, like, we close at 8 or we leave 9, 10. And uh, by the time, my food is still under the table. I never got to eat. And I did that for, like, a couple of the days. Uh, you know, I would bring the food in the morning, early in the morning. And I would go all day without eating anything, basically just talking to people. Because so many people from all over the places. And uh, people just enjoying my work. I mean, they yeah. really enjoy the, the, uh, the art and all the, the pieces that I brought in. Um, yeah, especially the big one. Uh, I think that was uh, the main attraction for them, having that big uh, piece. How big is big? Uh, well, the one that's a 9 by 14. Um, I think we have some uh, photos of that one, of how the show was uh, laid out. And um, the, the piece, I mean, Everybody would just stop and just admiring that the piece and come in and looking at it. Everybody taking photos uh, with me and the piece and then them in, into the, uh, because it's, I mean, 9 by 14 feet is a pretty large site. And then everybody else just start, uh, that was kind of like bringing people in and then people start looking at the work and they just spend their 20, 30 minutes looking at it, talking to so this, this was called the Art Expo New York 2019. Yes. And that's you. And behind it is what? That big piece you were talking about? Yes, that's about. the big painting. Um, um, and actually, I got selected as the best uh, new exhibitor for the Art Expo New York um, 2019. So that was uh, definitely a great surprise. And, uh, you know, it was a, a great uh, recognition. Oh, absolutely. So I was uh, very happy about that. Yeah. Now, who's the woman? 
Oh, her name is Linda. She's one of the uh, organizers. Uh, organizers over there, and she's the one who uh, goes around uh, interviewing uh, the artists and giving different awards. Well, I wish I'd been doing there. the we interview. We could have had a wonderful time interviewing you. <laughs> uh, you know, I wish <laughs> we would have somebody here from Hawaii uh, yeah, yeah. on the show. Uh, Definitely would have been a great uh, next opportunity. Time. I'm sure they'll be uh, here next time. Too. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Well, next time is going to be, uh, I got several events coming up. Now, next month, uh, I got invited to do the Biennale in Mantua. So I'm going to be showing my work at the... In Muse Italy. Uh, in Italy, yes. Um, so I'm going to be showing my work at the Museo Gonzaga in Mantua. That's uh, fabulosimo. Uh, yes, that's, so that's, a, that's, that's an uh, Italian the next, word, yeah. uh, That's the next um, <laughs> event. And then I'm planning to do the, uh, kind of similar to the exhibition in New York, they do it in Miami, um, Red Dot Miami, and uh, that's in December. So right now, all my work and everything that I'm doing is preparing for that exhibition uh, in December, which is the same thing, about forty to 50,000 people go there. Uh, to see the work, and, uh, and, and I'm looking forward to that. You're in the circuit now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, you know, more people and more people are uh, getting to know my work, and that's what is important. So let, let's, let's reel it back a little bit. How, how did you get set up in New York in the Art Expo? Well, um, I wanted to show, uh, I've been kind of researching for a while now how to do the, um, and then I contacted people who do the promotion for Art Expo. And then they, um, they offered me a space uh, at the exhibition. And um, normally the way that they set up the, uh, the booth is that they got all the big galleries uh, up the, in the front. And then they have uh, like solo artists that they already kind of established or they've been showing for a while. And then at the end of the exhibition, they have like all the new uh, upcoming artists. And, um, when I contact them, uh, originally they offered me a space at the solo, uh, but they were very impressed with my work. They really liked my work. And uh, so you write to them. Uh, yes, I, so I contact them. With you. Yes, you I, I contact them. Art Expo was going to happen. Yes. You wanted to be in it. So you write to them and you send them pictures of your pictures. Yes. And they take a look and then they get back to you. Yes. And not, no, not everybody who writes to them gets a, a spot. Well, I mean, uh, I, they have a selection process on the, of the work, um, and then, like I say, they offer me a, a spot at a solo exhibition, but then they really like my work, and they, pr uh, they put me in a better place. Actually, I would say they, uh, they put me at the beginning where all the galleries uh, worked, oh, great. Um, and I was there by myself, which was uh, a great learning experience because I have to do everything myself, <laughs> you know, the chipping everything from here, from Hawaii, all the, all the artwork. Um, then getting over there and then setting everything up because uh, I send everything roll, all the canvas, all the paintings. Well, you take them off the frame. I send everything, I roll. You can't uh, send them in the frame. That oh, would, no, that would because be that would be impossible, like yeah, yeah. chipping such a large pieces. And all the pieces that I have uh, were um, the, the 9 by 14, but then all the other pieces were 4 by, uh, by 5. And then uh, the latest painting that I did, which... Uh, I did it specifically for that show. That was a five by seven, um, and I think we have a we have a photo of that one that we can see later on. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's the, that the one. That's yeah. the the painting. This there. is the five by seven. Yes, that's five by seven. So all these paintings are very large, and uh, sending this, uh, I have to roll everything, and then I send all the frames, uh, all the all the wood to uh, stretch them. And I got there, and I have pretty much a little uh, afternoon. The first day of the show, it was on a Thursday. So I got there Tuesday afternoon, I have to set up a little bit, and then Wednesday I have to stretch every single piece. You had to do it. I have to do it. Uh, so I stretch everything, all, uh, all the canvas. Uh, I didn't, from early in the morning I was working until literally I finished at midnight. It sounds like it's hard, you gotta stretch it so it's flat. Uh, well, I had and to, there's only one of you. Well, I had a friend, he flew from Miami, he came to help me, and I mean, thanks to him, uh, I was able to, to accomplish uh, the exhibition. I yeah. couldn't do it by myself. Yeah. And we were uh, stretching and working and setting everything. Uh, literally, that Wednesday we finished like around midnight. We got kicked out of the place because you know, they have to <laughs> close. Like, we were <laughs> just setting everything. And then the next day in the morning was the opening for the, for the show. So we were there making sure that everything was uh, good and that we had everything set up for. And 
the next day, uh, I mean, I had no idea how many people would come to the, to the exhibition. And then just talking to all these people, the validation of my work uh, was an amazing experience because people really, really liked my work. And uh, people really enjoy it. I mean, they felt that was something that uh, different that they never seen before. And they really enjoy the, be able to talk to me because a lot of the places where they went. So I'm not alone. Uh, no, 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 definitely not. I mean, to, uh, to me, this is sort of, it jumps out at you and it, it, it distinguishes itself. And furthermore, it's, it's museum quality in the sense that if it was hanging, if that 9 by 14 is hanging on a museum wall, I would spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you were trying to tell me. <laughs> because there's a lot in all your paintings. There is so much detail and so much symbolism, you know, that a museum goer would really focus in on what you were doing. <laughs> and that's exactly the same reaction that I have from people. People were looking, people will go in and they spend 30, 40 minutes just looking at the painting and taking photos and then looking at the other paintings. And uh, they were trying to figure it out, the symbolism in it, and uh, what was the message behind the paintings. And everybody will come out with their own stories. Uh, so it was also funny to listen to a lot of the people because uh, they will come and they'll tell me their stories first, and then I will tell them my story. And, um, and they enjoy that. They enjoy, and then also they enjoy the, uh, looking at the paintings and seeing all the different uh, techniques, all the different uh, styles combined to one. Um, and that was something that caught a lot of people's attention. People will come and talk to me um, from all over the world. So I got uh, a lot of people also inviting me to go to like uh, different uh, college, university to show my work, to talk to the students. Uh, and then a lot of the- Art schools. Yes, art schools. And people, uh, I have students coming to me. Um, uh, actually, I had a couple that came the first day. They were talking to me. Uh, they spent like an hour there talking and looking all the work. Then uh, the next day, they came back and they brought their art teacher to see the <laughs> oh, work. Really? And then uh, I told you uh, you were yes, good. And then <laughs> so many people uh, have the same reaction. I have. A, um, I had a guy who uh, he just flew from uh, South uh, Korea. And he just wanted to come and see my work. Um, so uh, he came he, uh, to see yes, your work. Yes, he oh, said he just came to. So that definitely was a great validation of my work. And uh, kind of, you know, they inspire. You know, everybody will come and say, "Oh, you know, you inspired me to do this, and you inspire me to do this." Because people uh, saw like a different idea now, and they got inspired. Uh, but at the same time, I was inspired by them because seeing the reaction of all these people then that kind of inspired me to work harder and to paint more. So it definitely was an amazing experience yeah, yeah. and a great change uh, with the people. Yeah, I want, to, I want to talk to you about that. So these people who would come, they were from all over. Yes. They were from the art world and there were people, just, you know, maybe some tourists also, I suppose. And I mean, there's so many museums in New York. There's so much attention to art. There's so much care about it and, and a market. And a market, a lot of art trading all the time. So what kind of conversations would you have? What would they ask you about? Would they ask you about your background? Would they ask you about your Hispanic uh, culture and orientation? What would they say? What would you, what would you tell them? Uh, definitely, they will, uh, you know, uh, when I told them that I was Cuban, they, uh, they have a lot of questions, obviously. Cuba is always a topic that uh, people are always uh, interested in uh, about that topic. And they have a lot of questions about my work. And then uh, when they start seeing a lot of the symbolism into my work and related to Cuba, uh, that was uh, something that, uh, you know, a conversation that most people always had. Mm. And, um, and then uh, I saw some of the reactions that I, I was not expecting. People will come and uh, they enjoy my work so much. There is some people start crying. Some people have. So that. It, you know, seeing the reaction from people was something unexpected for me. I, I definitely was not expecting that type of uh, reaction from uh, the people, but definitely uh, a lot of people were touched. Uh, I saw a lot of, uh, I talked to a lot of Cubans and uh, people from Venezuela, and they were oh. touched by my work. Uh, they were touched. Uh, they talked to me about their family, 
uh, coming to to this country and you know the experience that stay out of Venezuela right now. Oh okay. yes, definitely. Yeah. And that's why that's why a lot of people from Venezuela have that connection because what the things that are happening in Venezuela right now and when they see my word they can relate to a lot of uh, the things that I do. The passion is exactly in there. the things that I do and then um, the the music and, and that's the thing a lot of my work Yes, I have message and things like that, but the main thing in my work is the music and the happiness that, that music brings to life. There's always music in yes, your work. Yes, because it's something that, you know, I'm trying to be positive and I'm trying to uh, tell people, regardless of all the things that happen around us that we cannot control, music is something that we can always have and uh, it makes us a better person, makes us feel better. And that's what I was trying to, to tell people and people were reacting to that. People were enjoying that because... Uh, you know, like people from Venezuela, they're, the situation that they have right now, and some other people from Cuba, uh, what they had in the past. So they were very happy about seeing my work and see, um, like you say, the quality of the work and the symbolism, the, the different styles, all the things that combine my work, and uh, people love it. Yeah, you know, we're in the middle of um, a whole thing about South America and Central America. Maybe we are more conscious of it because of what uh, President Trump is doing at the border, all that. Maybe we are more conscious, more aware of the people from south of the border, uh, the whole Hispanic culture, the whole, the whole South America, really. And I wonder if that feeds into this somehow. If I come and I see your work, I say, ah, this is Latin. This is south of the border. This is the color and the sound. and you know, the vitality of things, uh, you know, in Central and South America. I want that because it's a special moment in history, not necessarily a good one. I want to capture, and I want what you have captured about the culture, the blend of cultures. Did you see that? Did you hear that? Did anyone say that to you? Well, uh, definitely uh, People can, uh, you know, my, my work in, in a way is a little abstract. And uh, so people can create their own stories. And uh, uh, I was talking to a guy from Colombia. Actually, I, I, I met many people from Colombia, but a lot of people will come and they will look at my work and they, f and they tell me stories about their towns. And that related, you know, they will see the architecture because it's, it's Hispanic. It's, uh, uh, the a lot same, of your work is yeah, architecture. It's col the, the colonial work and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So they will come and, and look at it and they say, you know, I live in this town in Colombia, a small town, but the church, it just looked like the church that, you know, or the cathedral looked like this, or, or, the, or the stones and the, the, the streets. So they're, they're putting their own uh, story into the painting so and that's why they were connecting to it because they were coming and they were telling me all these stories from all over the places and no matter where you go in south america all, all those countries that were uh, at one point were uh, colony of spain they, they all have the same so, architecture yeah. um, and the same part of it, the same history so what you paint is uh, applicable uh, really uh, all so, over uh, south america is, yes it's i mean and then a lot of people from Europe, uh, when they see it too as well, they connect to it because, uh, you know, the, again, the architecture, the music, things like that, they can relate to it. So it's very, um, I would say, international. It's something that is not specific to one place. Uh, although my background is Cuban and I'm trying to depict uh, the Cuban culture and the Cuban um, landscape in a way, uh, applies to everybody and everybody can identify themselves with the work and with a painting. Yeah, the abstract and the, and the symbolism, it, it is reminiscent of Picasso. But, but let me say that I think, honestly, you have taken Picasso to a new level. <laughs> it's more engaging to me. It's more engaging than Picasso. And, uh, I have so many people telling me, that, you know, the same thing <laughs> in a different way. Um, a lot of people come and they say, oh, you're the modern Picasso, or you're the, you know, the contemporary Picasso. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they were calling me different names. And I mean, in a good way, I, I felt uh, honored to be compared in a way to Picasso. Uh, although a lot of the work is not uh, pure Cubism or, you know, and I, I, I tell them I take elements from Cubism. I take elements from different aspects to realism, abstraction. And then I combine all these elements to create my work. So it's not just, uh, but they, you know, they, uh, they have that feeling. They look at it and they say, 
oh, you're the contemporary Picasso. Or you are, um, so that was, a, that was a, the reaction that a lot of people had. It's not conscious, had. though. It just comes from the heart. Yeah. Yes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I got, you know, like I say, to me, it's an honor that people yeah. compare me to Picasso. I mean, yeah. he was a, definitely a great uh, Did great you painter. see anybody else in this space? Did you see anybody else doing Latin, you know, m motif this way? Did you see anybody else doing, um, you know, th this kind of painting in, in the exhibition or in other places you visited? Well, uh, not exactly, you know, nothing uh, similar to my painting. I mean, people, there definitely there was all uh, people, like I say, over 300 exhibitors uh, from 39 different countries, uh, hundreds of hundreds of artwork. I mean, I couldn't even see. It's international. Uh, oh, international. I couldn't, I didn't even see, get to see all the artwork. Because you had that to stay there. in your booth. And then, you well, couldn't leave uh, your paintings. I, well, <laughs> what happened uh, several times, and, and then I had so many uh, younger artists come and talk to me about their work, and they want to show me their work, and they want me to give them feedback on their work, and I was trying to do that. Uh, but a couple times, I will leave my booth, and as soon as I start walking, like three, four, five minutes later, my friend will text me and say, I have like 10 people here that want to talk to you, and they want to meet you, and so I have to come back and talk to the people. <laughs> and then I will walk away uh, trying to meet some other artists and trying to see other people work, because you know, I want to enjoy the show as well, but uh, I didn't have the time. I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, I start walking away, and then my friend will call me back again. Hey, you got to come back. Uh, I knew so, this would happen. Uh, it, it, I, I knew was this like, would, there was no time. You sound no like the time. most popular guy in the room. And there was no time for me to like uh, go anywhere. The whole time I spent just talking to people. But it also was a great experience meeting all the artists. I mean, so many new artists and so many people that I met, and then I talked. And I learned a lot from talking to them. I mean, there was so many artists that I talked to, and they were coming to ask me for feedback, but at the same time, when I talked to them, I learned from them, so it was sure. uh, a great experience. And um, Was it a good market experience? Did you get the cards yes. from all these people? Oh, Did the buyers got, come around? The dealers got, come around? Yes, I, I mean, I got invited from, uh, I mean, I got invitation from many, many art galleries. Uh, I got... Uh, uh, cars from all over the places. I mean, I don't know how many cars I got, but uh, invitation from all over the places. Right now, I'm getting invitation uh, from Siena, from- Siena? Uh, oh, uh, I'm boy. getting uh, from Portugal, uh, from yeah. in New York. Uh, I got uh, many, many galleries that- uh, And I know you. I actually <laughs> know you. Derwin, I'm so happy to know well, you. Well, you know- <laughs> You're I, an international I, person already. I, I'm happy to- <laughs> No, you too. And uh, so I got invitation from all these galleries right now. I'm just kind of like trying to figure it out what is the, uh, you know, my next step. Um, I got invitation from Dubai. I got invitation. Dubai? Yes, wow. I got an invitation to do an international uh, exhibition uh, for like 14 months, uh, going to different museums in Japan, London, uh, all over. But... Um, like I say, right now, I'm just kind of like uh, deciding what is going to be the next step and what are the, uh, oh. you know, the best uh, outcomes for me. Well, uh, sounds to me like this was beyond your expectation. I mean, you knew that New York was the mecca for art. You knew that this was a big art show involving a lot of people. Um, you knew that um, they would, a lot of people would come around because it's a mecca. But you didn't know the intensity that you would find. You didn't no. know how, exactly how popular yes. you were going to be among those people. No, definitely not. And, and given all the exchange uh, between you and the people who hung around and, and, the, and asked you questions, engaged you for hours at a time, uh, and the other artists who wanted to compare notes with you, you probably had some ideas about the evolution of your own work, some new strains you could you know, bring into your work. And I, can you tell me what they are? How, how did this change your work, this experience in New York? Well, um, I don't think, uh, actually, one thing that changed, uh, or is going to be changing my work, is uh, I'm going to be making a smaller pieces. Um, the reason for that is because it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, like to move and, and to do uh, all these exhibitions all over the place internationally. Uh, chipping and everything else is uh, it's kind of harder uh, with large pieces. It's so, easier to restretch a small well, piece and, than a large I, piece. A lot of the small pieces I can just send uh, already stretched, yeah. which uh, yeah. it's, it's easier for me to do that. 
So that's one of the things that are going to be changing on my work. Right now, I started a new piece uh, that I'm almost done working on that. And uh, that one is uh, about 36 uh, by 30. So is, th is that feet? Uh, inches, 36. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, you know, okay. it's, it's okay. so like about three feet tall. Um, and, uh, and that's good enough for most people I hanging think, on the I wall. Think that's a, that's and a museum would be happy with that size. Too. And a lot of the museums and things like that, when, you know, when I talk to museums or places in Europe, uh, they want something smaller than one meter, um, which is, you know, that, that is smaller than one meter. And that, I think that would be ideal for me to start making paintings that maybe something is smaller um, and then uh, will be easy for me to send everywhere to, and then I can create more work because uh, a lot of the times um, I don't have a large inventory because my pieces are so large and take me a long time to make and things like that. But um, if I create a smaller pieces, then I can work faster and then I can, you know, I have a larger inventory of work to show to people and all the different exhibitions. My guess is that um, whatever your perception of value was before you made this trip, it changed. In other words, the value of one of your pieces in your mind going out there was X dollars. Um, when, you, when you got there and you had this experience, it became X plus, am I right? You know, actually, that didn't change. I mean, um, I had the same, you know, the, the, the value of my work. I always value a lot of my work. And... Um, and I know, um, even going to New York, uh, uh, all the publications through all the books um, that are, you know, coming out, all the international art magazines that are publishing my book, uh, all my publishing my work. Um, I understand that there is a value into that, and I understand that people like my work. Um, I just uh, actually I just got published uh, this month uh, by Spotlight Magazine. And then uh, another book that comes, uh, that is coming out, that is uh, called The 100 Artists of the Future, that they're publishing oh, wow. my work. Oh. And uh, so a lot of these, uh, based on all these art magazines, all these, uh, and then all the art competitions and things like that, the response that I get from the people, um, I understand the value of my work. So going to New York didn't change it. Uh, I mean, just kind of validate it and, uh, in a way. And what's the next one? Well, like I say, you know, um, Italy Mantua is, uh, the Viennale in Mantua is going to be the, the, the next event. This, that's gonna this be, year? Yeah, that, I, that's going to be next month, actually. So I'm uh, flying over there to uh, Museum Gonzaga is going to be where the show is. And uh, I would like to be present there. And uh, then after that, I don't know what else. I, I mean, I, between uh, next month and December, I don't know while they chose. I'm sure uh, there'll be opportunities I, I'm, for I'm it. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of opportunities. Um, just got to create a lot of more of the work so I can have uh, yeah. uh, plenty of paintings to be, you know, to be able to participate in all the different shows and things like that. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope we stay in touch, actually. I oh, definitely. I really love definitely. to rendezvous with you in one of these, loca one of these um, you know, cities that you're doing um, an expo or an exhibition and, uh, and be there with you with a camera. Wouldn't that be fabulous? That would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, I would yeah. love to. I mean, yeah. like, I was hoping, I was like, man, you know, when I was there, I actually was thinking because the video, um, the, I have all the paintings, and, and then I had a, a, the sign with my name, and then you say, Derwin, Honolulu, Hawaii. And I was like, how great would it be for, you know, to have somebody here from Hawaii actually um, recording these and promoting because I think it's important for the people here in the island. A lot of the, uh, there is a lot of new artists and a lot of people here in Hawaii that, um, that would like to exhibit in New York or some other places. And then just having, uh, you know, somebody that can kind of show them in a way like, okay, this is, a, um, this is what you need to do. Or these are the things that you can do to promote your work or to be able to, to go and show your work in New York or some other places. I think that would be a great opportunity for any new artist uh, to, to have that. Yeah, it's great that you're associated with Hawaii. I hope you always are associated with Hawaii. I always will be associated <laughs> with Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii is uh, my second home, I would say. I yeah, mean, yeah. I've been living here for so long, and I'm not going anywhere. I just love living here in Hawaii. Yeah. Great. It's great to talk to you. I'm so happy for your success. I want it to continue. I want it to be global. I want you to be known everywhere, and yeah. I'll try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, you know. Thank you, Derwin. Great right, to have you down you. here. Derwin Leva, he's an artist, a Latin artist from Hawaii, and he's on a 
huge global ascent, and we're so happy to know him. Thank you, Derwin. Uh, thank you for being here.